Hello, we are back with Scarlet Hollow. We stand here at Reese's home now. It stands at the edge of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. An unending wilderness. Reese, it's Stella. I bought some buddies too. Shh, not so loud. He's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? Hello? The woman in the doorway stands directly, or stares directly, and she, she stays directly inside my eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation washing over you. Okay. Hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous, we promise. It's not going to, I'm not going to wake him up. If he's sleeping, he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now, anyways. Oh no, poor Reese. What's going on with him? It's just been so long since either of us have gotten the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Jordan would get along super well, too. You want some old peanuts? <laughs> Your pungent bag of peanuts. <laughs> Maybe you can bribe Reese's mom into letting him hang out with you. He can't eat peanuts. God damn it! Reese's mom turns back to the house, sighing. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was a little rude. You just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses both of you, too. She sighs again, as if deciding whether to finish her thought. He's usually feeling his best around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? He can ha we can have some supper, and y'all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise that he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten his spirits to see you two again. Okay. And I suppose you can come, too, Jordan. I suppose you can bring your stupid ass in here. <laughs> That would be great. I can bring a side dish. Maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? Eggs are a little much for him. Oh, god damn. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> Do you have a wasting disease or something? What is this? They don't settle well. Well, <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's worth it. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Do you make like... Do you make like spaghetti noodles <laughs> and that's it? <laughs> Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine, you can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine, ginger ale, preferably. God damn. Oh, and leave the dog at home. Oh, She might cheer him up. You know, they have those therapy dogs in hospital. No dogs. Why I never, the absolute gall. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. What, what, what is going on? Is he actually... Is he actually no good? Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks click. Several locks? Um... Is she miserying her son? Uh, Alright. Whatever. We'll fuck off. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we had to get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Or maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's just the three of us. You gonna drive? Yeah, sorry, I don't like the thought of going up there without the van. Cool, I'll take my shortcut then. Shouldn't take me long to get there. You're welcome to tag along, Jordan. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Kanika. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way works for me. Um... Um... Why Why do you not like driving? What's up with that? Aren't the mines a bit of a ways off? Don't worry about it, Jordan. There's a lot of junk in the back of my van. No, that's not why. <laughs> it gets a little tight with more than two people. No, it's because she doesn't like driving, but I want to know why she doesn't like driving. You have a car up on your shirt. What is this? Um, I'll get to know Kanika more. I've seen Stella. I'll ride with Kanika. See you at the mines. Kanika is a careful driver, but her old van still bumps around on the mountain roads. Thanks for indulging us on that little diversion. Reese's mom can be a lot, but I'm glad we have solid plans for tomorrow. Stella and I haven't really seen much of him the past few years. That sort of isolation can be good for his health, no matter what his mom says. Again? Okay, thank God. <laughs> What's going on with him? Can you tell me anything? Good question. I wish I knew. His mom's been saying he's sick for years, and it's not like she's wrong about it. He's been a wreck the few times I've seen him. But in... in what way? In what way? Detail. Detail. Ah, oh god. That's rough. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> Sorry for sneezing on you, Kanika. 
Um, can you tell me? I know, I know gossip, but I just want to know. Hey, God damn. I want to be done. <laughs> it took some convincing to get her to ride back with the cops. Oh, Kanika, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm allergic to dogs. <laughs> no, no, that, I'm not. That'd be terrible. I love dogs. Took them in the end again after everything that happened in the woods. Wait, she actually got into a car last night? She must have been really freaked out. That's how her parents died. Car crash. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it! I fucking hate sneezing. Do you know what I hate more than sneezing is people that say, bless you. I hate that shit more than anything. Cause they'll say bless you the first time I sneeze, but there's like five more sneezes coming, so there's no point in it. It doesn't do anything. Blessing me doesn't do anything, okay? It doesn't stop the sneezes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> I hate it. She was in the car too, just some cuts and bruises, but she doesn't like cars and tries her best to stay away from them. I don't think she's ever going to actually leave this town. Has she, like, talked to somebody about that? Like, a therapist? Good luck finding a therapist within walking distance of Scarlet Hollow. Hey man, they got Zoom these days. They got Discord. I don't think that's something Stella would go for anyway. She likes to solve her own problems. Okay, well, I mean, that's, that's great and everything, but you can't solve all of your own problems, you know? That's kind of why you need an outside... You, you need a third party to look at you, objectively, and explain things, okay? Don't you understand? Don't you understand the point of therapy? Um... <laughs> no, it wouldn't work. We would try to leave and it wouldn't work. You know that's how, you know that's exactly what would happen. Uh, do you have any theories besides what we talked about at the library? I don't know. I don't think there's enough information yet to support any strong conclusions. Though I've been wondering if what you two saw was maybe some sort of mutated animal, like a strain of hairless monkeys or raccoons or something. Do you know about Morgan Island? It's off the coast of South Carolina, and there's a whole population of rhesus monkeys infected with herpes, like 4,000 of them. Ugh. Maybe the ditchlings are some kind of alopecia research monkeys? <laughs> Which sounds ridiculous now that I've said it out loud. Forget I said anything. <laughs> hmm. What if they're aliens? You think they're aliens? Ha! <laughs> That's hilarious. Absolutely not. Are aliens real? Totally. I'm sure there's life somewhere out there. Do they look like weird little hairless blog monkeys? Definitely not. <laughs> Everybody knows the crystals. <laughs> Our whole hairless bipedal situation is one of the rarest body plans. Humans and other apes are super unique. Whatever multicellular life is out there, it's probably just crabs. <laughs> it's just crabs. <laughs> And the likelihood that they make it to space, let alone to another inhabited planet? Dang, here I go getting worked up about aliens. <laughs> huh, sorry, I just have a lot of opinions on them. <laughs> Is that so? Um, was the guy at the general store your brother? I swung by there this morning. Ugh, Miles, yeah. He didn't do anything weird, did he? <laughs> um, he tried to make me steal some chips. <laughs> Of course he did, and I'm sure he told you all about how we get most of our money from bulk orders, so it doesn't really matter if you take something. <laughs> you didn't see he's done this before. It's fine, thanks for letting me know. I just wish we would grow up. It feels like I can't trust him to do anything without leaving a mess for me to clean up. Don't get me wrong, he's family and I love the guy, but he sure doesn't make it easy. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about living somewhere else that's like, not here? <laughs> Asking the real questions, huh? I can respect that. Yeah, this wasn't the plan, and still isn't. I was actually a couple years into vet school, top of my class, might I add, when my dad died. My mom wasn't up for running the store, and, uh, you've met Miles. <laughs> Damn. I only wanted to take a semester off, help them get back on their feet, but it's been a year and change now. It's not just about my family, too. The general store? That's THE general store. If it winds up going under, it's hard not to imagine the whole town collapsing with it. Yeah, that's the only place to go. Maybe I'll go... or maybe I'll get to go back next semester. Uh, <gasps> oh, I 
I don't. Why do I not know? How will you? How do you not know? <laughs> oh. We are very deadpan sometimes. This character. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, <laughs> that's good that you took that well. Um. back and finish school. I mean, it's your life, lady. Like, I get it. I get it. If the general store goes away, then God knows what's gonna happen. But, like, that's not on you. A little harsh, but I guess you're not wrong. I suppose it's hard to think about what I want with other people relying on me like this. I appreciate the vote of confidence. Not a lot of people here share your perspective. <laughs> I find that this is an interesting option. Because you know it would not work. It just, it just wouldn't. It can't. It mustn't. I'll remain silent. You and Kanika sit in comfortable silence for the last few minutes of the ride. You and Kanika arrive at the mines before Stella. I mean, I would assume. <laughs> Stella's probably going to be another couple of mi- Oh. <laughs> Did you fucking sprint here? <laughs> hey y'all, how was the ride? <laughs> uh, 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 I'm gonna put Gretchen down for a sec. <laughs> It's so good to see both of y'all again. <laughs> Your stupid, stupid face. Did you run here? Yep, <laughs> felt like getting a run in. I didn't want to keep y'all waiting. <laughs> My poor Stella was scared out of her mind. You would have thought the very hounds of hell were at her heels and all that running rattled my bones something awful. <laughs> you didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we just go talk to people. Guess so. I should probably be on lookout duty. I'm a bit of a persona non grata in these mines, Tabitha. <laughs> yeah, I might have tried sneaking in to talk to her a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. <laughs> what can I say? I thrive in the limelight. <laughs> we're probably less likely to get caught if one of us is snooping around down here. Um... I don't one of the us you're talking about. <laughs> uh, well, and only one of us is going, what's the third person doing? Hmm. You know those cheesy rom-coms where someone wears an airpiece on their first date? Well, you have some kind of surveillance rig in the back of your van that I don't know about? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I have a pair of earbuds with a good mic. <laughs> we can just do a group call. That works. Um, I can go in. I want to look at things and talk to people, I guess. You'll do great. Here's those earbuds I mentioned earlier. Thank you. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Dang, I've missed doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. <laughs> oh, thanks. I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? I suppose so. Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Hey! Can you hear us? Try saying something. Um, something. Still in Kanika chuckle on the other end of the line. Alright, cool. Nothing to do now but enter the work site. I enter. I mean, it's just a mine. <laughs> you pass through the unlocked vents and under the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. Like, it's, it's a normal looking mine. <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> All right, Morpheus, good to know. <laughs> um, hmm. How do we approach this? Should I go directly from my cousin? She's. Um, I fear if I talk to other people first, they're gonna talk to her, and she's gonna be like, "Why? Why are you sneaking around talking to everybody?" Maybe going directly to her is the best thing. She'll tell me to get lost, obviously, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go to the main office. You make your way to the trailer in the middle of the camp. Uh, I'm not gonna hang up. I'm gonna enter. Why would I, why would I, why? You enter Tabitha's trailer and find her sitting at her desk, her head buried in her hands. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are those ridiculous things doing in your ears? Ah, <laughs> oh, crap, good luck. Sorry, Jordan. Are you trying to record me? No. No. Oh my god. 
<laughs> snatches the earbuds out of your ears and throws them to the ground. Typical phone addicted city dweller. Ugh. What do you want? Quick, before I kick you out. Uh, um, there has been somebody following me. I don't like how still can you want me to snoop around the mines. Um, I mean, I don't want to leave though. Um, someone has been following me. I don't think that you'll respond well to me saying this. <laughs> if you see this girl, tell her to leave and her little dog too. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but like, if there's a bad, if there's a baddie upon the town and they are following me, you should know about it. I don't think you'll care, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. A guy named Wayne's been following me. He jumped me last night. He knows me by name, and I'm pretty sure he works or worked at the mines. There's something seriously wrong with him too. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> what does that fucking mean? Look, I'm sure if you ask around about him, you'll hear some rumors, especially from my employees. They like to gossip. There was a man named Sam Wayne who worked here for a spell, then he disappeared. Happens all the time in this line of work. People show up for a job from out of town, and they disappear one day after getting paid. I don't know what happened to the man. I don't even know if he's still alive. But of course, my work co-workers blame me for running him off. Whatever. It's easy to blame the mean boss for that sort of thing. If you've seen him around, that's news to me, and also none of my business. And he is no longer in my employ. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um... I don't think she'll give a shit about them. <laughs> Tell me, though. There are monsters in the woods, Tabitha. I know it's hard to take this seriously, but we caught them on camera, and they're supposedly a portent of doom for the town. I'm not asking you to believe me, but I'm asking you to take me seriously. I don't know anything about monsters in the woods, but if there's some kind of doom coming for this town, it'll be because I'm not able to do my job. Okay. Look, I'm kind of swamped right now. I'm actually getting ready for a big meeting when you walked in, but if you want, you can just wait here for an hour or so and I can swing back when I'm done and pick you up. Just don't go around bothering my men. Don't move a muscle. Don't so much as make eye contact with them. They're supposed to be working. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, talk to them and make eye contact. <laughs> I'm gonna walk right up to them and make deep, deep eye contact. I'll see you then. Tabitha leaves the room. As soon as she's gone, you place Kanika's earbuds back in your ears. Hey, is everything good? Um... Um... I don't know if she's hiding something or not, really. I don't... She... I, she didn't give a direct indication, I don't think, of hiding something. I'm more just not caring. <laughs> um... I think maybe. Mm. I'm gonna see if I can find some miners to talk to. I'm glad you've seen the light. Oh, come on, Nix, cut her some slack. Tabby's not that bad. <laughs> She's totally that bad. No use sticking around her. Continue your investigation. I want to continue my investigation. I will uh, disregard everything that Tabitha just told me. <laughs> as soon as you leave Tabitha's office, you're struck by an intense feeling. You recognize the hollow terror as the same thing you felt last night when you set eyes on that awful man in the miner's jacket. Woo! You shouldn't be up here, it's dangerous. What are you? Flesh and blood, much like yourself. You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey Jordan, are you still there? We've just been getting static from you. That's bullshit, that's bullshit, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. Hmm. Our new friend just stopped by to say hello. I thought I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? Um. <laughs> I mean, I don't... Not really any reason to say that though. <laughs> he could just have a thing on his head. Uh, uh, he did tell me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week. I wonder why. What the hell is that supposed to mean? He must have been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. Uh, it just means we're on the right track. Not about to back down. Whoa, so brave. <laughs> Heck yeah, Jordan, we've got your back. <laughs> As you leave Tabitha's office, you take a moment to get your bearings, only to be interrupted by a sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. 
A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. Well, I'm gonna be following you. Hey, uh, I think I just saw Rosalina. Oh, was that her? Wait, really? What is she doing here? Well, she came in that little hole there. <laughs> Clearly she's doing a delinquency. <laughs> um... I mean, you could call Oscar. That, that seems a normal good thing to do. It's like, hey, we, we saw her. I mean, I, I'll, I'll also go after her, but you could also call him. Those, those aren't like a mutually exclusive thing, you know? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go after her. Good idea, we'll try and catch up with you. Or you could also call him, but whatever. Oh, is she going in the fucking mine? You rush over the hill and get your bearings, the sounds of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. Something about the mine feels wrong, as though a cold anger lies burning inside, sucking the life from the surrounding hills. This is the side of a mass grave. Okay. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After it collapsed, they killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drive me into an abandoned coal mine. Hmm? <laughs> teen's always been like this. I feel like I really missed out on my risk taking here. <laughs> I never did anything like this. <laughs> yeah, I would never. Okay, maybe I've poked my head in there a few times. Well, let's get in there before someone gets hurt. Are well, you sure you want to tag along, Neeks? Jordan and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. Why the fuck is she going in the mine? Why is she bringing snacks? Who is she feeding? <laughs> Even if it means I have to go underground. Okay. Stella and Kanika disappear into the mines. Before you follow, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. Um... That seems like an exceptionally reasonable thing to do. That seems like a normal, good thing to do. I'm gonna do it. You pull out your phone and call your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting. Yeah, I mean, there's no... There's no reason not to tell her that. A kid just snuck into the shop. Well... There's no reason not to tell her that. Which makes me wonder if I shouldn't tell her about that. <laughs> but is that is that me trying to four-dimensional chess the game when in fact just being reasonable is the correct thing to do? I'm just gonna be reasonable. I'm gonna be reasonable. If it fucks me over later, who can like whatever. <laughs> We're right with God, okay? We're right with God. <laughs> I figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do things keep happening to me? Ugh, whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, all right? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, happily, wait. I do not want to go in there. Uh, I mean, I, I did just call you to let you know, but I do very much want to go in there. I mean, you don't have to say it that way, though. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to be an asshole about it. You're just like, no, no, I want to go in there. Anyway, I'm going. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just letting you know. I swear to God. I'm sorry. You hang up the call. I'll follow. You take a deep breath and follow your new friends to the mine. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expected. The air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you were tall, forcing you and your companions to hunch over, your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate its maze of corridors. Hey, you made it! Told you would. For a second there, Kanika thought you were making a beeline for Tabby. I mean... Whatever. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> you say nothing. Well, what matters is that the gang's all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. I press on. The deeper you progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Coal dust hangs in thick clouds around you, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Jesus, it's cramped down here. Does anyone else's chest feel tight? I certainly can't say I'm one for dark and stuffy places. This seems much more suited for a cat if I do say so myself. Yeah, abandoned mines are way more claustrophobic than people expect them to be. And this one's real bad. You know, because of the child miners. <laughs> or should I say the minor miners? Shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna be in a mine, 
I'm just gonna tell you something. You should have oxygen because, you know, people don't think about it. There's there's places where there ain't no air. Or there's not, there, there, there's, there's air, but you know, there's gas in the air that will kill you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't explore abandoned mines if you're just like a person. Just don't do it. It's not a good idea. Okay, I'm not superstitious, superstitious, but if there's one way to make sure you get haunted, it's cracking jokes about dead child laborers while we're walking on their graves. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. What can I say? I do my best to tempt their spirits wherever I go. I can't believe you'd come down here on purpose. Yeah, it was part of my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, Stella, the things you do for your viewers. <laughs> Did you find anything? Are you getting this? I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta record this while you're doing it, right? <laughs> I wish. If any place in Scarlet Hollow was actually haunted, it'd be this mine, hands down. But all I got was dust in my lungs and a couple of false alarms. Stella pauses as sound rushes overhead. Oh my god, what was that? The mine's going to collapse and we're all going to die here, aren't we? Stella sighs, long sighs longingly. That's just how wind sounds down here. <laughs> you sound so disappointed. <laughs> it just brings back memories of my last foray into the these depths. Every time I thought I'd finally found a spooky ghost, there was wound up being a very unghostly explanation. Ain't that how it goes? Like local wildlife, for instance. Hey, little bat. <laughs> hey, little bat. How are you? Stella turns her flashlight up towards an alcove overhead. Say, what's the big idea? Yeah, we were sleeping here. Shut that light off, you nosy bastards. <laughs> I am so sorry for my companions. Stella means well, I assure you. I'm sorry, bat. Those guys got me real good last time I was here alone. I'm sure you're quite worried about me after my behavior last night, Jordan, but let that interaction be assurance that my temper is most wholly under control. I wouldn't dare venture away from the safety of my Stella's arms in a horrible place like this. <laughs> good, Gretchen, good. Oh my god, there are bats down here? <laughs> yes, there's bats down here. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna get rabies, aren't I? I'm gonna get rabies and die in a mine collapse. I hope you're up on your shots. <laughs> you holding up okay, Nix? Lady, we've gone like 10 feet in. Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little on edge. Kanika is stopped mid-sentence by a thunderous knock echoing from deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was death, of that I am certain. That was, I have no idea what that was. Did that sound like knocking to you guys? <gasps> Maybe it's the Tommy Knockers. A hateful and broken presence stirs in the de deep. It doesn't want you here. I was just thinking, maybe that's Tommy Knocker. Um, <laughs> y'all are babies. These are normal cave sounds. I know all about caves. <laughs> maybe Tommy Knocker. Yeah, maybe it is. To think there might have actually been something down here, and I just missed it the first time around. Okay, no. Tommy knockers are not real. They're not allowed to be real. Are you trying to give me a panic attack? No, 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 lady. No panic attack. I'd love to spend some extra time poking around down here. Maybe it's got something to do with the mystery. The three of you are interrupted by a second, much less distant sound of a can being popped open. Okay, now that wasn't Tommy knockers. It came from this way. Follow me. I mean, okay. You and Kanika follow Stella further into the mine. What are you fucking teens doing down here? You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageways give way to a small cavern. A group of teens turns and stares at you with annoyance. What the hell are you all doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here? You creeps, are you stalking us? Yeah, creeps. <laughs> I just said that, Alexis. If I wanted an echo, I'd yell into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Bastards. Yourself. Your dad's looking for you, Rosalina. Your dad is looking for you. And who the hell are you exactly? That's Jordan, Tabby's cousin. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you, Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're fucking stupid. <laughs> You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. <laughs> You're in an abandoned mine, you stupid fuck. What are you talking about? It's like one of the most dangerous areas you could pick to go in. You're insane, you're insane! You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. 
Don't you kill? Don't you, don't you have school tomorrow anyways? What are you doing here? It's fall break. And we're not kids. We're not kids. We're teens. Fucking bunch of Young pups these days, absolutely no respect for their elders. <laughs> Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where'd you even get those? The teens avoid eye contact. Miles tries to melt into the cavern wall. Oh no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It had better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? How did you even get here before me? Becca's right. It sounds to me like you're stalking and harassing and all that. You're supposed to be minding the store. It's not like anyone even comes in on Tuesdays, and Mom's there, so it's fine. Eyes dart uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. <clears throat> it's not fine. It's extremely not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would give to be as carefree as you? I left school so you'd have a chance to live your life, and this is what you're gonna do with it? What would Dad think if he could see this, stealing booze from the family store to dick around in an abandoned mine? Dad's dead, Kanika, but if you were here, he'd be disappointed you wound up being such a bossy jerk. Sure. <laughs> Who cares if we're having canned margaritas somewhere nobody's supposed to bother us? You could pick so many places to go. Like, there's, there's like, infinite places you could be, and you choose to be here. Um... <laughs> yeah, there, can we, like, not do it in an abandoned coal mine? These kids want to make bad decisions. Like a different, maybe the dictionaries were kind of inevitable. Yeah, can we just like not? <laughs> can we not? Oh, and what are you, an expert on mine safety? <laughs> no, I'm just not stupid. <laughs> they only abandoned this place because there wasn't enough coal left to bother digging anymore. <laughs> and mines famously stay up forever. <laughs> with, with no maintenance for a hundred years. <laughs> stupid, you're stupid, your brain cells are stupid. My dad told me, and he's an actual foreman at the Continuous Mining Facility, so he knows what he's talking about. Wait, I thought your dad was a charge hand. No, Alexis, he got promoted last month, and he says this place is totally safe, and we can hang out here anytime we want. No, he fucking didn't. <laughs> Correction, your father was a foreman at the Continuous Mining Facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Oh, hey, Tabby. <laughs> oh my god, you did call her, didn't you? That's why it took you a minute to catch up with us. Yeah. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do none of you understand what a boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. <laughs> oh, come on. This place is way sturdy. Check it out. Oh, you stupid, you stupid, you stupid. The team with the beanie jumps up and slaps a strut on the ceiling. Oh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? <laughs> oh my god, Zane, cut it out, you're embarrassing us. <laughs> I'm sorry for Zane's behavior, I don't think he realizes how extremely 8th grade it is to jump up and hit things. <laughs> I'm cool, I'm ninth grade. <laughs> you fucking children. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. None taken, the other 8th graders are totally immature, but I am very mature. <laughs> Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart, too. <laughs> Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. <laughs> I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha about anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. Maybe it's not a big deal. We used to do dangerous stuff all the time, and it's still, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation, what with the whole ditchling thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can hang out? I mean, it, they don't own the mine, what are you talking about? <laughs> they don't own this place, they can't just be here. <laughs> I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. <laughs> it is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave, much like it is entirely within my rights to tell you to leave, once your lifetime ban from the mine is not a clear enough message for you. <laughs> Hell yeah, Tabitha. Tear the sad 20-something to shreds. <laughs> hey, I'm defending you. I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? <laughs> you do seem sad. My Stella can't possibly be sad with me around. How absolutely rude. These pups need to learn some manners. <laughs> uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. <laughs> so she's sad, so <laughs> let's talk more about her sadness. 
while she's around. <laughs> so she's sad, so what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is inescapable. Oh, I see you've just given up. <laughs> Look, we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell him about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the, past, for the past couple weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our house. It'd be kind of cool, though. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool if like, you had your own little room in a library. That'd be cool. <laughs> that's like... Lady, that's like movie material. That's like kids' movie material. You're living in the library? What are you talking about? You're insane. You people are all insane for different reasons. They've got a hot plate and a couple cots in one of the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup. <laughs> No, it isn't, Zane. <laughs> Rosalina deserves better. Um, I'll keep it to myself. You keep what Pixel told you earlier to yourself. <laughs> I don't care about your home life. If you're gonna do your underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my property. Yeah, I don't know why you would choose to go here. Like, if you're gonna do some underage drinking, just do it out in the woods like the normal people do. <laughs> do it like normal teens. Tabitha. Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy, and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh, no, not this again. <laughs> and I should care because... Because it's such a bullshit excuse. I don't... <laughs> what are you talking about? It doesn't matter what her life is like. You can't just be here. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? That's, like, uncool these days. We don't bully no more. <laughs> Shut up, Zane. <laughs> Oscar actually invited us to check it out when we saw him earlier today. It could make for a fun, non-abandoned coal mine-related activity. Just throwing it out there. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Be Becca's right. <laughs> I just wish you would be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. No, I mean, Pixel backed you. Pixel backed him up. <laughs> it's like he doesn't think I can handle it. I'm still a little kid. Ugh, you're all children and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for child labor laws, the five of you might have some actual character. <laughs> Exactly. Rosalina is not that mature anyways. She still sleeps with stuffed animals. <laughs> Doesn't mean she's not mature. I saw a pork chop, you know. <laughs> I rest my case. Wait, what'd you say about child labor? <laughs> um How do you know there isn't a ghost though? <laughs> How do you know that? Ugh, why are all the adults in this town such weirdos? <laughs> There is no ghost. There are no such thing as ghosts. Oscar's just lying. Yo, what if we break in and ghost bust the place anyway, just to be sure? Oh my god, Zane, you can't ghost bust if there is no ghost. Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. Well, then it's not breaking and entering, is it? <laughs> There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. Why aren't we all staying here? Why are we still in this room? <laughs> you people are just waiting for something bad to happen. You know, Rosalina, you can always stay over at my house until Stella goes bust your place. <laughs> we have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. See, that seems pretty nice, actually. Why are we talking about this like it's a thing? It's not a thing. There's no ghost. <laughs> I don't care, and I can't believe I wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. You hear that, Miles? We're leaving. I suggest the rest of you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets black lung or gets crushed by rocks or meets any one of many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. There you go. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella. Didn't you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mine noises? <laughs> It's Tommy Knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we've got to check it out. <laughs> Stella! <laughs> I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. I'm like the, the abyss that stares at me. Do you have no sense of self-preservation? <laughs> I want you out of here, Stella. Oh, come on, Tabby, you can come along too. <laughs> if you guys are going after something spooky, count me in. 
Nobody's going deeper into the mine. Nobody's staying in the mine. You're all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. <laughs> It'll be fun, Neex. It'll be fun. It will not. But what if it is? Wait a second. Where'd three of you run off to? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika. Maybe if you weren't still scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and I'm like, been zoning out the whole time we've been here. Well, aren't you so fucking cool? Aren't you just the fucking coolest man I've ever goddamn seen? <laughs> Ugh, they must have squeezed through- <laughs> They must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. <laughs> Those damn child tunnels. Dang, I've always wondered where that goes. Never been able to get these hips through there. It's probably for the best, dear. Stella, stop sneaking into my lines. <laughs> Please, I am literally begging you. <laughs> If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could have already been done with this little mess, but now we just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Uh, didn't you just talk about how child labor was the good old days a minute ago? <laughs> I was trying to get you to leave my mind. Becca's head pops out from the tunnel's entrance. We are not about to leave. We're not like gonna let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, Becca says we're safe and we're totally safe. <laughs> I just, whatever. Come on, you two. I know a cool spot this way. You people are stupid. <laughs> people are very stupid. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them, and I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. <laughs> if those idiots get themselves lost and die, I'm not letting their family sue me into the ground. <laughs> Are those really your priorities right now? Yeah, you have a problem with that? <laughs> I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, Jordan. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Oh. Yeah, sure. I can never fit in that tunnel anyways. They have crossed a barrier that I cannot, so my time here is up. <laughs> but only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. That sounds fun. <laughs> Whatever. I still have to do my dailies anyway, and the service down here sucks. <laughs> I will happily escort these two knuckleheads out. No, you are not about to weasel your way into the Stella. <laughs> oh, come on, Tabby. I've been down here a ton. I can totally help out. I don't think that helps your argument. <laughs> Tabitha sighs. Ugh, there's no getting rid of you, is there? Fine, I won't waste my time arguing. Um, we're still away like shit. I didn't deserve it. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't comment on it. They're both going along with it. Just let it let let it ride. Let it ride. Uh, all right, let's do this. Sure. Let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to t or want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'll be easier to cover more ground without her. Excuse me, I'm a formidable and self-sufficient monster hunting companion. Ha! Huh, yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want a repeat of last night, and who knows if we'll have to do any climbing. I'll see you on the other side, hopefully soon. For sure, we won't be long. Cool, can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Kanika, Miles, and Zane head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to find the remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. You and Stella exchange a glance as Tabitha ventures forward. We will venture deeper into the mine into the heart of darkness. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. Becca, why are we doing this again? I thought you thought Tabitha was like, really cool, why are you trying to get her all mad? <laughs> uh, we're doing this because Tabitha's really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around, so we can't just let her boss us around. <laughs> oh, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. <laughs> I can't believe she used to hang out with a nobody like Stella. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I don't know, I think Stella's kind of cool. Her videos are real neat. Oh, come on, she doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? Shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> I mean, not yet, but I'm in talks with Meat Rice, and I have plenty from ads and donations. Meat Rice. DM. <laughs> Dang, Stella, Meat Rice, that's a big deal. Oh man, I wish they were gossiping about me. <laughs> Gosh, I'm not so sure about that. I know they're just teens, but some of that stuff stung. 
They say stuff about you that's accurate. <laughs> another knock closer interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. Okay, that knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosaline, it's just mind sounds. Did, did you guys see that? No, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. I saw it. Shut up, there's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Why are you people down here? Hmm, turn the knocking. I knew those poor kids, they're done for. <laughs> Uh, they better get grounded when this is all said and done. <laughs> as much as I appreciate the sentiment, I hope you're wrong. If they get grounded, it means people found out about this. I hate dealing with parents. <laughs> Look on the bright side, Jordan. If they didn't come down here, we'd have missed out on a golden opportunity to get spooked. Tap the glares, Estella. Um, what did they see? Tommy knockers. It's not Tommy knockers. They're probably just jumping at their own shadows. You said it yourself, Stella. As soon as they got out of our sight, their bravado would vanish into a puff of smoke. It's probably just rocks falling somewhere deeper in the mine, which is also bad for obvious reasons. Yeah. Eh, let's just keep moving. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrified teens, their panicked arguing, bouncing down the, the pitch-black corridors. The pit radiates rage, a white-hot anger. It hates you, but at the heart of it, you can sense something else. The quiet hum of a darker presence. The heart calls to you, desperate to be witnessed. And here we are. The tunnel they crawled through passages or passes through the chamber below. It shouldn't be hard to find them once we get down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. I guess. Tabitha crawls up to the ladder and disappears over its edge. All right, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Follow them down into the pit. You walk to the ladder and climb down. I'm pretty sure this is the way. Or, I'm pretty sure this is the way back. Come on. Pretty sure. I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I definitely remember the way out. Hurry, I don't want to be down here anymore. I think it was actually this way. Oh, shut up. No one even wanted you to come with us anyway. Becca? Yep, they're close, all right. Good thing they're so goddamn loud. <laughs> it sounds like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions, sound odd, distant. Step forward. There's something in the darkness beyond before you that's much louder that you don't hear it. I walk towards it. You don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest. A desperate need to perceive and be perceived. I wrap myself in the darkness of the pit. Hey, are you alright, Jordan? Bear witness. What do you think you're doing? Get away from there. Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Oh. You said we wouldn't use this shipment. You know it's compromised. We couldn't afford to wait on new wood, Charles. We had to go ahead with it. It's still sturdy enough. It'll get the job done. Jordan. Jordan, are you alright? <laughs> oh, thank God, you're alive. It looks like you had a seizure or something, and then you and Tabby just conked out. I'm fine. Uh... You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourselves while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm gonna get you both some help. I'll be back soon. Pro I promise. Don't leave me with them. <laughs> you fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. Oh. 
You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitudes more intense than ever. Through it, you once again hear the panicked voices of bickering teenagers echoing down the storm corridors. Becca, you're just getting us more lost. It's this way. If you're so sure, then why don't you just leave? I can't believe I let Alexis talk me into inviting you in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will. Alexis, you don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I, um... Becca sighed, Alexis. I'm sure Becca knows where we're going. She wouldn't just lie. Sorry, Rosalina. The increasingly desperate voices of the teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the ground shake beneath you. You can almost see the walls vibrate with the intensity of the hellish sound. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? The song goes just down. Um, did you know something might happen? I've seen horror movies. <laughs> Fair. I've seen horror movies. You look like you're about to wander off and get yourself killed. I didn't want to let you out of my sight. Not down here. Rosalina appears in the passage. Wait to your left. She's out of breath and it looks like she's been crying. I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of rock fall. I don't know what the hell is up with this knocking, but that is the sound of a mind collapse. Quick, up that ladder, both of you. Wait, Becca and Alexis are still down there. You can't just leave them here. I know which way they're going. They'll listen to you this time, I promise. Do you have a death wish, little girl? This isn't a movie. The best thing we can do to help those girls right now is to not be buried alive ourselves. Um... Hmm... Hmm... towards Rosalina. Your dad wouldn't want you to die down here. What about their parents? They wouldn't want Becca and Alexis to die like this. They already crossed that bridge. You can cross it too if you want. I don't care. Rosalina hesitates for a moment. Alexis, Becca, the way out is this way. If you just follow my voice, you'll be able to make it out. Okay, let's go. She grabs your hand, and the two of you start climbing. This way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who's spent her entire life working in her own coal mines. Becca, Alexis, can you still hear me? The knocking drowns out Rosalina's desperate shouts as the three of you crawl closer and closer to the entrance. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I left you guys. It's deafening now, as if someone were trying to break through the walls with fists of iron. Continue towards the entrance. You continue to push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the pace. The entrance is so close. I'm so sorry. And there it is. Freedom. Freedom. The three of you manage to squeeze through the entrance just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. Alexis. Do you think the other two? Maybe they got out. It's possible, right? Maybe there's another entrance or something. Or maybe they're still alive in there. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Rosalina, are you okay? Your dad's on his way. He should be here any minute. I'm so sorry. I'm going back to camp. I'll be back with some men. And they can start digging. I'll, I'll, curl, I'll call the girl. It takes a bit of time, but eventually Tabitha arrives with men and a machine to start digging through the rubble. You, Stella, and Kanika are afforded a quiet moment to yourselves as the others get to work. Hmm. What was that? There was a stone carving on the wall of that pit that showed me what happened to this place. Charles Shaw was set up. The Scarlets caused the old collapse. Charles Shaw was set up. No way, dude was a monster. I mean, the Scarlets were monsters too. They still are. <laughs> what am I saying? I don't believe in visions. Whatever you saw was probably just auto-suggestion. 
I don't know, Neex, you weren't down there. Jordan and Tabby had, like, simultaneous seizures next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because they passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it was an auto-suggestion. Are you sure those were Tommy knockers? Depends on what you mean by sure. Is anyone really sure of anything? They fit the description pretty well, and I don't know what else they'd be. The Lost Souls. I have no idea what happened in there. I need to do some reading on mine collapses, I guess. It was, it was the shadows of dead miners. I know what. They were right behind you just before you left. Did you not see them? Oh, I didn't see anything other than the two of you in that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. You might have just been primed to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile for some of the Tommyknocker stories. What if they're actual bona fide ghosts? Oh, Stella. Everything that happened down there centered around that main chamber where I saw that carving. I want to know more about the carving. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Oh, please. Yes! Take photos, people! Maybe you weren't entirely off base about the cult stuff you mentioned earlier today, but this thing felt old. Older than the hills. <laughs> Ditchlings. <laughs> that, that was our ditchling problem, right? Case closed. Good work, team. <laughs> yeah, not not to be flippant, but I don't think that was the end of our ditching problem. I can't imagine how much worse this could get, but I think you're right. We've still got a lot of unanswered questions, too. Even more than we had this morning. And we had a lot of questions this morning. This is all still a little too magic for me. Just because two bad things have happened doesn't mean there's a pattern. Right? <laughs> right? I can't believe you left us down there. Why not? This is normal. She's just getting help. Back on Alexis or Kai. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What happens now? Hey guys, I don't think she's re quite ready to talk just yet. What happened down there? You met the kids Rosalie hangs out with? Mm <laughs> hmm. Something terrible in that mine. I think Tommy knockers. She did stand up for herself, and that's real nice. That's real nice. I'll tell him that, I guess. She should be proud. She's a good kid, Oscar. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I made sure of that. Thank you, Jordan. I just wish I could have kept her from going in there in the first place. If I'd paid, just paid closer attention to her, maybe none of this would have happened. Those kids wouldn't be down there. I can't help but feel like it was my responsibility to prevent this, and I blew it. Mm. I mean... I, I would have to know more about your ghost situation. <laughs> whether you're being completely unreasonable, or whether there's some poltergeist shit happening, and it's like, okay, let's live in the library for a bit. <laughs> if some poltergeist shit started happening to me, I think it would be totally reasonable to live in the library. Um... I mean, there's only so much you can do. And the shorter the leash, the worse the relationship. Don't blame yourself for choices someone else made. As a former reckless teen myself, and as a current reckless adult, yeah, he's right. I guess that's true. I've tried to let Rosalina make her own mistakes and learn from them. But that's for staying up late, or at least going too fast on her skateboard. Not this. Yeah. I don't... I don't... How, how, how do you feel about ghosts? How do you feel about them? You clearly seem to believe in them. I don't know if that helps at all, though, telling him about the, something terrible being in the mine. Mm. She was trying to get away from the haunted house situation. I'll say that. You have to understand that I'm not making it up. There's something in that house. We believe you, Oscar. couldn't let it hurt her, and since I don't know how to get rid of it, I set up a back room at the library for us. Just until I could figure out how to fix things. I know she hates it, but I thought it would be better for her. 
So that just drove her away, staying with friends, not checking in, and now this. It's all because of that house. And because of me. Because I haven't been able to fix this. I just wish she could understand. <laughs> I will put the spirit to rest if it's okay. We can help. You're not alone. Yeah, we'll totally help you get rid of your ghost. Or more likely, we'll figure out what non-ghost thing it actually is. It's the pipes. It's always the pipes. <laughs> Either way, though, we're here for you. Thanks, you guys. That really means a lot. I shouldn't have kept this to myself, but I was so afraid of singing ridiculous. Dad, you must be so mad at me. Oh, Rosa, no. Of course I'm not mad at you. I mean... <gasps> I am, but we'll save that for later. Do you think that maybe they got out? Maybe there's another exit somewhere. Rosalina. I should have pushed back harder. I knew the way out. I should have made them come with me. I just don't want them to be bad. Don't want them to be dead. I'm so sorry, Dad. You don't have to be sorry. You're alive and you're safe. We couldn't have gone back for them, right? We wouldn't have made it out if we went back. I mean, I mean, judging by the fact that the mine just collapsed when we left, no. <laughs> but if we had gone back, who can say what would? Maybe maybe none of us would have gone now. Or maybe we'd all, all would have gone now. Maybe it would have been fine. Or maybe they would have gone now and you would have died for some reason. Who can say? Who can say? You're alive and you're safe. That's all that matters. You're right. We wouldn't have made it out if we went back for them. We made it out there because you stood up for yourself. I'm going to say that again. Becca was too proud to listen to you and Alexis decided to stay with her. It's not fair, though. They didn't deserve to be buried alive for that. I know how difficult this is, and you can be upset for as long as you need to be, Rosa. I think the best thing you can do for your friends right now, until we get them out of there, is to enjoy the life you have. I know I haven't made that easy for you. I know you've been frustrated with the choices I made. But I'm gonna do what it takes to move us back into our house. We're gonna have a good life again, Rosa. I'm sorry I didn't do this sooner. I'm sorry this is what it took. Dad. We're on the case. We'll be okay, I promise. I'm gonna take her home. I guess we'll see the three of you tomorrow. And thank you, Jordan. We have You have no idea how much I appreciate what you did for Rosalina. No problem. As Oscar and Rosalina leave, your cousin exhaustedly saunters over to you. All right, Jordan, my men are set up to start digging. Let's go home and get some rest. Now hold on a minute, Miss Scarlet. Go fuck off. Mind if we have a quick word with your cousin, Miss, in private? Okay, fine, just make it quick, and don't you dare try to pull anything on him. He did nothing wrong here. <laughs> Ladies, I'm afraid that means you too. Do you know everything? Don't you need to talk to us? We witnessed this too. Oh, sure, but that can wait. We know where to find y'all. Sure. What do you fucking want? What a coincidence, running into you two nights in a row. This is my colleague, Deputy Derrickson. I remember you from that little puking incident in the diner yesterday. Apologies for my absence last night. It was my special bowling night, you see. Man has to have his me time. <laughs> but I was briefed on the events of last night, even though we're still not sure if what went on could be considered a crime. Duke has been missing since then. You didn't get the body? Okay. Though we found neither hide nor hair of him, could be he's just on an extended hunting trip. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very extended trip. Wouldn't be the first time he's done something like that. I was told the footage showed his supposed body, but we couldn't get that camera worked on, so no way to confirm until we track him down. Now, I understand both of these were terribly unfortunate accidents that had nothing to do with you being in the area, but as officers of the law, you have to understand that we get a little suspicious when we see the same face multiple times in a row. And, uh, we have to ask, what exactly were these teenagers doing in a shuttered mine owned by your family? And why were you down there with them? You've got to understand where we're coming from. Two kids, 15 and 14, are buried alive down there. And maybe they're dead. And you were on the premises. Whether or not that was merely coincidence remains to be seen. But we've got to do our diligence here. You'll do your diligence here, but not yesterday, huh? I think you're well out of your depths. Hmm. hmm. I wonder if it's useful to bring Wayne up to them. I don't know if it'll help at all. 
But like calling Tabitha, it seems like a poor decision not to bring it up. So I'm gonna do that. I also need to talk about the man that's been stalking me. His name is Sam Wayne and he used to work at the mines here. That seems an awful lot like deflection to me, wouldn't you say so, Earl? This is a nice town. People don't go about talking st or stalking strangers in these parts. <sighs> Can you at least just take a fucking description? For the love of God. Fine. Please. Derrickson scribbles down your description of Wayne. You watch too many movies. Now can you tell us what happened down there? Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Whatever, fucking goddamn it. You're, you're useless. You're fucking useless. Um, yeah, we, we, I mean, I'll just be direct. We saw him sneaking in there. We were just trying to do the right thing. Of course, of course, very noble of you. Pardon our questions. Just trying to gather all the facts, you see. Oh, yeah, you'll, you'll gather all these facts, but not what I want to tell you. Just being thorough. Our duty as officers of the law. Well, if there's nothing more you can tell us, I suppose we'll let you go on about your evening. But we may be in touch. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you fucking will. Have a good one. Leave me be. Deputy Derrickson tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back towards the mine. Derrickson taking notes as they examine the scene. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe. Two nights in a row. Is it my fault, Neeks? Stella, no. This is all just an awful coincidence. It's not your fault. Oh, hey. Guess the cops are done with you? What, are they going to take you in for being president in an accident? Sorry if they gave you a hard time. Small town cops, you know. Always blame everything on drifters. Even acts of God, I guess. Excellent. You didn't get arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, come on. Let's get back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest before I have to deal with the fallout of everything that happened tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Jordan? Excuse me, I... Just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Tabitha starts walking to her car, pulling you by your arm. Um... I will leave with Tabitha. I'll just say see you tomorrow. You can practically feel Tabitha roll her eyes as she drags you to the car. <laughs> Whatever. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on er, the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. Mm -hmm. I'm doing terribly, by the way. <laughs> mm. Do think Becca and Alexis are okay? We won't know for days at the earliest. Their parents should have kept tighter reins on them. I never got into any trouble like this when I was a teen, and I have Pearl Ann to thank for it. Hated it at the time, but that strictness paid off. Ugh, what am I telling you this for? <laughs> well, are we bonding? <laughs> I guess, sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, they're not not. They're not not. Every parent should have the talk with their kid. Don't go into abandoned mines. <laughs> um, let's say you're right. Exactly. People who aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents, and clearly there are some parents who aren't ready. Take Oscar. There are tons of people more qualified to be parents who can't even conceive, and here he is having a kid at 19, and clearly letting her do just whatever the hell she wants. It's not fair. Um, I mean, his house is haunted. <laughs> I'm just gonna placate her, I think. Tabitha goes quiet. It seems that's all you're going to get from her on this. Um, why, 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 why are you not like Stella? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she'd get that when, or I just wish that she'd get that we're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks she knows. Mm. Um, how are you holding up? Poorly, but I'd really rather we didn't get into it. Okay. Uh, I don't think she gives a shit and doesn't help anything. Uh, I'm gonna ride in silence. 
Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again cross the threshold into the estate, the musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. You gonna like get that fixed or something? You can't just like let that go. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrifically stressful week. <laughs> I'm going to bed, I suggest you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. You could have, no, you should have waited for me, but I'm too tired to argue. I'll see you in the morning. Nah, whatever. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs, her posture defeated. I will turn in. You head up to your room to turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw Mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Y'all, these are those things, right? Oh. Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. I saw them again, too. Oh. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. What the fuck? These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being there than the mine collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest win room window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes, even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you could almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, your thoughts drift to Alexis and Becca, terrified and alone, if not already dead. Oh. Hi. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Oh, okay. It's just you. <laughs> just the cat. It's always just the cat. <laughs> Don't read into this. The woman kicked me out. Just want a warm place to sleep. <laughs> oh my god, you do love me. You do love me. I'll pet you eventually. I'll pet you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. Oh, good kitty. What's going on in here? Why'd you kick the cat out? At that with her mind. Oh, you need to get that shit fixed. Jesus. We got some creaky ass doors, huh? <laughs> oh, what is beneath here? Is there secret doors? Done. 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 The drums and the mind. Doom. Doom. <laughs> Yay! Finished another episode. That was fun. I like that. I'm very interested to see where it goes. <laughs> We're very quickly getting to the point where, <laughs> it, you know, it's episodic. It comes out over time. <laughs> We're very quickly getting to the point where there's all there is, which will be very unfortunate. I don't, I don't like the thought of just stopping a series for a while and then having to return to it. But you do what you do. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, then come back and see me next time. Goodbye!